Yeah, but three things that have worked or that I would advise an upcoming photographer to do or you know to embark on. The first one is it really is about your eyes. So you need to train your eyes, irrespective of whatever camera it is, be it a phone or even be it scribbling on paper. I think what's most important is to train your eyes to see stuff. So you walk into a space and you're already thinking of frames, you're already thinking of angles, composition. Just train yourself to see beyond the ordinary. There are a lot of things that when I show people the behind the scenes of some pictures, they're like, oh my God, how did you see that? How did you know that? I mean, it's just consistency in training your eyes. So really it's not about the camera. Another one is to um, don't stop shooting. I cannot overemphasize that one. Don't stop shooting. It, it, it's understandable that at times you might be you know, tired or you might feel bored. Just don't stop shooting. Wh whatever it is, wherever you find yourself, just keep shooting. Um, the thing is what you consistently behold, that's what you eventually become. So if you want to be that great photographer, maybe you want to continue to shoot a whole lot. So don't stop shooting is very important. Lastly, it would be to get yourself a mentor. I can't overemphasize that. Since I started, you know, actually actively having a mentor, it, it's changed, changed, changed everything about my craft. When I say mentor, I mean mentor, which is you have to have a relationship with the person. I can't come and tell you that Father Abraham is my mentor. I'm not gonna see Father Abraham anywhere, so he can't be my mentor. But you know, someone you can talk to, someone that you know takes interest in you, you can share your work with the person, you can review it, you can ask for tips, you can ask him to you know share best practices and experiences. That kind of person. I didn't say role model, so it's not, I mean, I don't mean you should mimic what the person is doing, but a mentor which can you know help you channel, you know, the way you shoot, the way you deliver stuff, you go a long way. Every business in the creative space, uh, I think these are tidbits I learned from my mentor, which um, I have tried, I have applied, and I think uh, I can say in my own little way it works. The first thing is to invest in yourself. Business is an investment, no matter how you're looking at it. Whether you're an artist that's drawing, or you're a musician that's singing, or you're a photographer that's documenting, you just have to invest in yourself. Note that I didn't say invest in your cameras and your lens, but in yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's what you tell the camera to do, that's what it's gonna do. So you wanna go into as many trainings as you can, however expensive, factor it in, work your ass out. Just, you know, make sure that you're able to invest in yourself pretty much. Build your, you know, your techniques, build your org cap build your fluency and that way you know that every time you pick up a camera no matter what camera it is you're delivering value the other thing would be somewhat of um, what most people don't do which is you have to run your financials yes it's a it could be a one-man business it could be maybe you or a family business or you could see it as a small business but you need to run your financials what do i mean by that you need to have your, you know, your financial statements, you're doing your budgeting, you're doing your forecasting, you're doing your depreciation. That one is very important. So depending on the frequency with which you shoot, you should be able to depreciate your camera. So say you bought your camera for 50,000 Naira, and if you shoot maybe 2,000 weddings a week, we're talking 52 weeks times 2,000 weddings, we're already around maybe 100,000 images already. By the time you know you're looking at what's your short account, how long does it take your shutter to your short account to max out? All of that should lead you to an answer, which is oh, maybe I depreciate my camera by 10% or 15% every year. Matter of fact, I depreciate my camera by 25% every year, which means that every four years I must have made enough money from depreciating my cameras now to be able to buy another camera. So you probably will never find me with a camera that's older than four years because I've depreciated it to zero. By the time you're working those financials, I'm also talking about your profit and loss statement. Budgeting for a wedding, is, it goes beyond, oh, I want to make a particular amount of money. How much are you paying the people that are you know, gonna assist you? What's the cost of prints? What's the cost of feeding? What's the cost of you know, running your generator or you know, paying your electricity bills for that period? All those things count. What's the cost of feeding yourself? 
what the time value of money the time you know that you're gonna spend editing reach out to you know editors outside check how much they charge per image check how much they charge per time factor those things in if you're doing those things yourself by the time you also consider the expenditure then you would know your worth and you would know you know the actual value of what you're doing so that way you're you're not um confused about oh how much am i charging or you know what am i supposed to make from it what am i not supposed to make from it you already know your worth you've placed a value on yourself and of course you probably deliver at that level of value so the sky is the limit Thank you.